Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. And uh, this is, uh, I must admit, uh, Beacon Hill Academy first. And uh, we've never done a, a parent webinar session before. Um, so just some basic housekeeping, really. If you've got any questions uh, during the course of this presentation, then please do put them in the chat area and uh, one of uh, our colleagues here at Beacon Hill Academy will be able to feed some of those questions through to us and we'll hopefully be able to answer them. And also at the end of the presentations, there will be a question and answer session. So first of all, can I thank you for joining us? Um, really grateful that so many of you have taken the time this evening to get to know more about some of the online platforms that we are offering uh, our learners at Beacon Hill Academy. Now some of you may feel a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of things that are going on and uh, from the feedback that we've had both from learners and parents um, that there were certain things that um, parents felt that they wanted more information on. So in addition to responding to individual emails we thought it'd be quite useful to have uh, such a webinar session where we were able to support you with any technical problems that you might have. So just to give you the structure of how this session will work, um, I'm going to firstly hand over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Walker, who is our Assistant Principal for Teaching and Learning. Now, Mr. Walker will talk you through the Microsoft Teams um, software package. Now, Microsoft Teams for us is our main vehicle for setting work and also for giving learners individualized feedback. And there is a timetable on our website so you can see when students are supposed to be engaging in some of their lessons. Um, we have voiceover um, PowerPoints for all, all of our core and EBAC subjects and work is set on a weekly basis. So again, Mr. Walker will talk you through how that works and how we give students individual feedback. And then I'm going to um, talk you uh, through um, uh, regarding GCSE Pod. So GCSE Pod is another online learning platform that we use. It's absolutely fantastic. And I'll be able to demonstrate and show you how that works. Um, and then I'll hand over to my colleague, Miss Foster, um, who will talk to you about Century Tech. Uh, again, another fantastic platform that the, uh, the Academy has invested in. And then finally, um, and this is where it gets a bit technical because uh, Mrs. Redden, who is our head of maths, isn't actually in the school at this moment in time. So she's joining us from her house and we're going to hope to be able to uh, switch over to Miss Redden, who's going to be able to talk to you about um, Hegarty Maths, which is our special online learning platform just for maths. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Walker who will talk to you about Microsoft Teams and the way that we are able to set work on a week by week basis um, to all of our individual learners. Okay. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to be with you finally, albeit virtually. Um, so without further ado, I'll talk you through the MS Teams program and the advantages of using that software to support student learning. <clears throat> So first of all, uh, the core subjects of English, Maths and Science are setting two pre-recorded lessons each week on Microsoft Teams. Alongside that, the other subjects are setting one pre-recorded lesson each on MS Teams and a separate lesson as well to go with that. Um, students can access the lessons by their Beacon Hill Academy Microsoft 365 account. And learners can also, as Mr. Darmy said, upload their completed work onto the school portal via MS Teams. From this, they will receive feedback on a proportion of their work. <clears throat> there is a live schedule in terms of the lessons when they're located, and it can be found on the distance learning section of the school website. So it's a purple timetable. Each lesson takes your child around 45 minutes to complete. So when you go to our website, this is the first page you'll see at the moment, which is an introduction to the webinar. And um, what you need to do, first of all, is to allow the cookies to optimise performance of the website and then click the X or the cross in the corner, which will enable you to move to our home page. On the home page, just underneath the address bar, 
there are four small squares which comprise the MS Office logo, which is highlighted on your screen now in a red box. If you click this logo, you will be right, redirected to the Microsoft sign-in page. On the sign-in page, you've got to enter your child's email address as instructed on the introduction page to this section, and then click Next. This will then load the next screen, which is where you enter your child's school password, again, as instructed on the first page to this section. When you click Sign In, you'll then be greeted by a, a, another page and at the top of that page you will see a number of options that you can select. You will be able to click onto the Teams logo as highlighted. The next page loads which should be similar to the one that you can see now. On the left hand side of the screen there are the following icons. Activity which is a log which charts the work that's been set, completed or fed back an assignment section as well, which has got all the classes that your child belongs to. What you need to do is select the relevant class, e.g. English, Maths, Science, by clicking on it. When you do this, you can then click Next. This will prompt a new page to load, which will show all of the assignments which have been set by that particular subject teacher. Each assignment should show the subject, topic, number, and then the sequence of the lessons, as well as the due date. You wrote, load the relevant lesson by clicking on it as shown. There may be a Word document to accompany the PowerPoint for the lesson. In the Word document, there might be things present such as PowerPoint, as, as vi advice how to use the PowerPoint or YouTube links and other web pages. That moves us on to the next section of the guidance, which is how to upload work to MS Teams. Before you start the process, it's important that learners remember to save their work to the chosen location on their computer. To upload completed work, first of all, click on the Add Work section, which is again highlighted by the red squared box, and it's located under the My Work at the section of the page. Depending on where this, your student or son or daughter has chosen to store their work, they need to select Upload from this device. This will enable them to select the relevant file of work and upload it by clicking Open, as shown below. So there are one, two and three steps. This will upload the work and they will be able to click Done when the process is finished. The student's work or file then needs to be formally handed in by clicking the icon on the top right of the screen. And you can see at the bottom where I've numbered number one, where the work has been uploaded. Then it's a case of handing it in as I've previously said. Important to note, when this has been done correctly and the work has been handed in, you get a confirmation, which will include details of the time and date of submission. The next section of the presentation is with regards to teacher feedback. Any teacher feedback which has been sent to the student can be found by selecting the activity icon on the left hand side of the screen. Such feedback will be identified as being labelled as assignments returned as shown by that second box below it. By clicking on the relevant assignment your child can access it and look at what went well and an even better if to improve their work. To make the necessary improvements, the students can select their previously submitted work, which appears under the My Work section, and amend it accordingly, as labelled by point one. The student then needs to select Add Work, which will enable them to upload the work which has been amended. This is shown above in point two. It's important that the student or your son or daughter remains, reminds remembers to save any amendments that they've made before adding the new work. As per the process of handing in originally shown, the student then needs to hand in their assignment again by clicking on the icon at the top right hand side of the screen. I hope that's enabled you to um, understand how MS Teams works. 
If there are any questions which follow up, please uh, use the comment box to send them in to us. And I thank you for your time. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Walker. And just to let you know that we'll be making this PowerPoint presentation available on our website. So if you uh, want those step-by-step -step instructions, we will place them on our website for you to be able to look at that. Okay, we're going to go over to um, Mrs. Redden now, who is going to give us a demonstration of uh, Hegarty Maths. So Hegarty Maths is an online learning platform, as you can probably tell, just for maths, but it is brilliant for being able to gap fill and for students to be able to um, use individualized feedback from Hegarty Math to be able to make progress. So we're just going to switch over now. And this is a technical bit that we're going to now um, have to uh, look into to be able to give the rights to Mrs. Redden. So if you just bear with us for 30 seconds. Hello, hopefully you can hear me now. Hopefully on your screen, you can see the HegartyMaths.com website. I've started here on purpose just to actually sh give you a real life example of what it is that your sons or daughters um, or the children in your care, what they actually see when they log on. So the first thing that you have to do in the top right hand corner here, you've got student login and you've got teacher login. Hopefully they're aware that they will be students. If it's the first time that they've ever logged in, you will be asked what school they are in. So I'm just going to delete this. So find your school. If you start typing in Beacon Hill, there will come a selection of it and it's just the second one that comes down. So you don't actually need to type everything in there. Now, I am going to be using one of the past pupils login details just to give you a real life example rather than giving you an example of um, from, from a teacher's point of view, because obviously that's not going to help you. So first things first, um, the helpline um, emails that we get from parents, from carers, the number one question is uh, that the pupil does not know their login details. So you've heard it here first. The very first question that they need to answer is what is their first name? The second part is what is their surname? Now I would hope that they all know that. This comes directly from the school's SIM system. So, so long as it is spelled correctly on SIMs, it is what their legal names are. You are then asked for their date of birth. So I'm just gonna pop this in now. Now, before I turned this on, the first thing I did uh, was I reset the password. So the very, very first time that you are asked to log in, you'll be asked to set a password. Now, I want to really iterate this, that we have no control over what the passwords are. We can reset them, but every time they are asked to log in, they will be asked to create a new one. So you can't see this, but I'm just going to pop in a new password. I will reset it for Jack afterwards. OK. And then this is the screen they come here. They've got this thing that's called a donut. OK, there are 925 skills on Hegarty Maths. Every single pupil has access to all 925 skills. This goes from the very basic of maths, from learning simple addition up to grade nine material that the top set year 11 can um, have a go at. If the teacher has set work, it comes up in the top right hand corner here where it says my task. You'll see Jack has got five um, in the little red bottom. So I will pop that on there. Hopefully you can now see now you can see the teacher that has set them and then you can see to start the task on the far right hand side. So if I just pick the third one down, start task, this is what they will see. On the left hand side, you've got the video. So you, I'm not going to play this now for you, but at some point you can have a go at this. This is pretty much just a screen recording of a teacher going through a lesson. It's very, very similar to the same experience of a teacher standing at the front of a classroom, but it's just the screen that has been recorded. 
at any point if they're going through the lesson and they feel that there's something that they are referring to that they have never done before so maybe a bit of prior knowledge that they are missing if you scroll down Hegarty have put all the building blocks so all the prior knowledge videos that they need to be able to answer those questions from the very basics positive and negative numbers up to brackets involving thirds. So any element of maths that leads up to being able to have a go at this specific task they have got at the bottom. Once they've had a look at the video and written all their notes down and had a go at those questions, there is this do quiz part on the right hand side. On this particular quiz, there are 12 questions. The first question being expand six brackets F plus three. Now, for each question, you get two attempts at it. Now, it could be that you type something incorrectly. Um, it could be that you put a decimal instead of um, a, a full stop. OK, something simple that is a bit of a typing error. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry about that for the moment. Six times by F is six F and then plus now, I do know what six times by three is. However, I am going to make a mistake on purpose just to show you um, what happens on the screen. So the first time you've attempted it, it will say that, no, you've not got it correct. Have a go at it. Do you want to have a go at the video again? OK, now it comes up with get help. So you can either click that and it will show you where it will show you the exact point in the video. However, if I just get rid of that, the other option you can do instead of getting it wrong on the right hand side part here, it says do not use a calculator and then it says get help. So it's just another link to the same part. This get help brings you up to the video. Oh, I'm going to pause him. Now, what you will notice, I hope, is that the video has started at three minutes and 58 seconds. That means that this is a section in the video that will help you with this exact question. If you got to question five, it will take you to a later part in the video. Now, all the elements of the video are all in line with the elements of the quiz. So as the video gets progressively harder, it mirrors how the quiz gets progressively harder. Right, so let's just have a second go at that. So we've got six F plus, and then six times by three is 18. Let's pop that in there. OK, now I did say that you might have typed something incorrectly. Maybe you've put an extra space in. But actually, if you were writing it on paper, it would be very, very obvious what you meant. If you feel that you've made a mistake because this is an online program. Then what you can do is you can leave a comment and saying, I meant 6x plus and then whatever else it is. And you can send it to the teacher that has set the quiz for you and submit that comment. That will come directly to me. You can then go on to the next question. At any point, if you are not sure, or if you want to finish it, all you have to do is come out of this screen. You don't have to save it. This automatically, because it's online, it's instant. So the next time that Jack tries to log into this, it will tell him that he has got question one correct and that he's starting off at question two. When I, as a teacher, go to log in, I will be able to see that he has done question one and that he got as far as question two, but he didn't actually answer it. The other thing that I can see um, when, I have, when I clock in as a teacher is I can see his first attempt at the question and I can see the second attempt at the question. Now, in a moment, I am going to show you what I see as a teacher. So that whenever I get told that they um, spent half an hour on their work, I can actually tell you exactly how long they spent. And if it's only three seconds per question, then actually at that point, the reality is that they haven't really given it a good go. Now, I mentioned earlier that they have access to every single skill task that is available here. If you look in search Hegarty Maths up at the top here, and you can type in anything. So if we try ratio or you've got rationalizing thirds, if you, as soon as you start typing something, it will bring everything up that matches that particular strand that you've 
that you've had to go there. So ratio or addition, you've got access to everything there. That's now when the teacher has set you a task. Then you can search, have a go at the whole thing. If you want to have a go at a little bit different, we've got this revised section here. Now this is relatively new. It's only in the last nine months that Hegarty have actually created it. You've got two things here. You've got fix up five and then you've got the memory task. So first of all, fix up five. That is everything that you have got wrong in the past. So you will be given five questions of five questions that you have made a mistake on in the past. And the idea is that you fix it and get it correct. You have the video that is linked directly to that question, but they might not all be the same topics, just five questions that you're wrong. The next section is memory. Now memory is about questions that you have got correct. So this is about recall. So in a week's time, in a month's time, in three months time, are you still able to do those questions or was it just in that one instance when you had the video, when you've had the lesson that you were able to get that right? Has it actually gone into your long term memory? So that is what this memory section is. So a little bit of a summary. Anything you've got wrong is fix up five. Anything you've got right but need to recall is the memory. Now I'm quickly just going to log out of Jax and then I'll show you what it is like as a teacher. Okay. So when I am looking at this, let's have a look at some current tasks. Um, so I can see here. So if I just go into this quickly, uh, let's show details. I can see all of the questions. So I can see that this pupil, their very first attempt, they got this correct and it took them 21 seconds to answer that. I can see that it took them 24 seconds to answer the sec second question, 47 seconds to answer that and 61 seconds to answer the bottom one. So it did get increasingly difficult. It took them that little bit longer. But this is the value that I can see of everything that the pupils are attempting. So when they have said that they have spent half an hour on it, the computer doesn't lie, it records every single thing on it. Okay. Now, as I just under, um, as I log out now, I am going to attempt to send this back to Mr. Darmy. Um, again, a little bit of technical issues, so please bear with me. Um, but if Mr. Darmy, if you want to unmute yourself and then start um, finishing off, I will try and send you back. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Miss Redden, and sorry for the lag be, uh, between each PowerPoint presentation. But as I've mentioned, we're actually not in the same room, so we're actually doing this uh, across uh, different locations. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, what I'm going to do now is introduce you to GCSE Pod. So again, this is something that your uh, sons and daughters will already have had access to. It is mainly a resource that we use at Key Stage 4, so that's for year 9, 10 and 11. But it can be something that uh, learners of year 7 and 8 can use too. So, GCSE Pod. Um, in short, if I can just click onto the next slide, um, GCSE Pod is basically um, a software package, an online package that has lots of little videos of everything that needs to be covered in every subject area uh, for every topic. Um, and it, the, the, the videos are very short, they're only three to four minutes long, and they are little, they're short, snappy, and got, have got lots of different animations to engage learners. Now, all of your sons and daughters should have their username and password to log in to um, GCSE Pod. However, if they haven't, all you need to do is to click on that blue bar that says uh, new here or get started or forgotten password and it will send you a new password. So all they need to do is to type in their school email address. Now they will already be using their school email address for uh, Microsoft uh, Teams uh, and if they have forgotten or for whatever reason uh, they need to know what their email address is they can email us at helpline at beaconhillacademy.org.uk. 
So once you get through the initial login stage, it is very easy to use. You will be presented with a new dashboard. Um, you may have to click on the banner at the top of the screen saying, take me to the new website. It has recently had a revamp. So if this is something that you've used before, it might, slightly, it might look slightly different to what you've seen before. But you can see there along the top of the screen, you've got different icons, one for every different subject area. And all your, all your child needs to do is to click on that particular subject, uh, whether it's history, science, maths. Uh, and what's really good about GCSE pod is that it's not just for the core subjects. A lot of our staff and a lot of our teachers use GCSE pod uh, for non-core subjects. And then once they click into each subject, um, it will break it down into different topics. So for example, just clicked into English and you can see you've got all the different topic areas, got prose, drama, poetry, and what they will do, what they need to do is just to click into one of them. Um, so if I clicked into poetry um, or novels, you can see that you've got lots of different um, pods, which, uh, which is just another word for little videos. So you can see that in this section here, which is based on Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, you've got uh, six or seven short videos that are no longer than three to four minutes. And all uh, your child needs to do is to click on the video and uh, make notes or do brainstorms on each one. Unlike with some of the other online learning platforms, uh, there isn't the facility to um, have individual assignments or quizzes, uh, but that is something that uh, GCSE Pod are in the process of developing. However, for now, all we would ask is for learners to watch these pods um, so that they can actually recall some of the information uh, from their topics and from their subject areas. Now, what we've been saying all along is that actually it's beneficial for learners to recap on what they have already learned as opposed to learning new topics, because what we don't want to do is to confuse individual students. So um, it's really important that um, when students log on, uh, they go into the topics that they've already studied. So GCSE Pod is a great revision tool. Um, now, if you feel that your son and daughter has revised everything that there is to revise already and is a great fan of GCSE pods, then by all means, feel free to move on to the next section. Um, but at this moment in time, our advice as a school is to revise and recap and we will cover new content when learners return to Beacon Hill Academy. As I've already mentioned, it's primarily aimed at year 10 and year 11, uh, but of course um, it can be used for other year groups as well, especially year 9. Um, and, and also, as I've mentioned, GCSE Pod does cater for every single exam specification. Now, we've restricted the settings so that students can only access our own specifications. So um, depending on what exam boards we do across all the different subjects will determine the individual pods that learners can engage with. The great thing is with GCSE Pod that you can also use it as a mobile app. So um, your sons and daughters can load this on their smartphone. They can use the Google Play stores or the Apple iTunes stores to download that app. Um, and actually some of our students find it's really beneficial just to sort of listen and walk around the house, listening to the individual pods. A lot of it is about recall and retrieval. So sometimes students um, listen to it just before bed or walking around, and even going out for a jog, you know, they can just plug it into their ear, plug their earphones into their phones and they can listen to these individual pods. It is a personal favorite of mine as a history teacher. Um, and I do believe that actually it's quite engaging and uh, interactive. So um, on that note, I'm now going to hand you over to uh, my colleague, Miss Foster, who is an English teacher, and she is going to talk you through uh, Century Tech. OK, I'll hand over to Mrs Foster. OK, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to talk to you about how we use Century Tech in English. So um, first of all, what is Century? So Century is an online learning website that uses science and artificial intelligence 
to provide learners with a bespoke and individualised learning experience specific to their needs. So it really works to adapt the learning that they do um, to the child, um, specifically because it uses artificial intelligence. So the reason that that's really good for us in English is because it helps us as teachers identify gaps, address misconceptions, and um, supports our interventions. So we can really see where students are excelling, but also where they might be struggling so that we can adapt our teaching and also the online provision, just to make sure that we are really um, tailoring what we put out there for the students. Okay, so um, really simple guide now on how to use Century. Um, I know a lot of uh, students are really familiar with it, but if you aren't, hopefully this will um, clear that up. So, um, first of all, if you type in Century Tech into Google, it will come up straight away, or you can go through the school website um, and the address is there. If you don't know your login details for Century, you can get in touch on the helpline at beaconhillacademy.org.uk and we will reset them for you. So you sign in and you will get a screen that looks like this. And um, what comes up first is a bespoke path that Century has developed for your child. So this focuses on areas that Century has identified need extra work. So this is where the artificial intelligence comes in, because it identifies what that student in particular needs to move forward. Now, at the moment, particularly in English, um, I set assignments every week, every Monday, and every Wednesday. So new assignments appear for English twice a week. And those assignments will appear where the blue arrow is um, on the screen. So to have a go at the assignment, the student just needs to click on one. Once they have clicked that, a screen will appear that looks like this. Um, sometimes it might be a video to watch, sometimes it might be a, a PowerPoint to click through or some information to read. So you look at that, you watch um, the information or read it, learn from that, and then click to move on. Once you've done that, some questions will come up which test your learning and what you've been doing um, previously. So this is an example of a question. You select an option, the option obviously that you think is correct, and click submit answer. There is the option to click I don't know if you're not sure, so they don't have to give an answer if they're not confident. It will tell you automatically if you were correct or incorrect. Now, um, the student will probably notice that the questions start off quite easy and then um, gradually they might become more challenging as the artificial intelligence um, gets an idea of where the student is and how confident they are on that topic. So they, the questions might become more challenging as you click through. When you get to the last question, you click here where it says view results to see how you've done on that topic. Then what's really nice is that it comes up with um, a percentage score and how much is complete. And then you have the opportunity to rate the lesson and also to tell the teacher how confident you felt on that topic. So for us um, in English, we get all of that information through and it allows us to plan then um, if a child or several children have said that they aren't confident on something, we can obviously plan um, to go over that and support those misconceptions. Okay, so that's it for Century. So I'm going to pass you back over to Mr. Darmy now um, to look at some questions that people have had. Thank you, Mrs. Foster. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. And um, what I'm going to do, we do have a couple of questions that were submitted in advance and we will uh, attempt to answer those now. But actually I'm very um, happy for you to turn your mics on um, if you've got any individual questions that you'd like to ask about anything um, that um, you've got or equally feel free to uh, type them into the chat room on the, the right hand side and we'll be able to respond to those. Um, so just as you're maybe chatting or thinking about a question um, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that we've had already. So we've had an, a question from Alison. Alison says 
Are there any resources that I could purchase myself to help my son as he will be starting year 11 in September? His subjects are triple science, business studies and history. Also, is there any additional reading he could be doing in English? I think that's a fantastic question. So one of the things that we're going to be doing um, and uh, you've, uh, you guys have got a little sneak preview to this, is that we're going to be launching something called our Head Start program. And that's basically what it is. We're going to give students a bit of a head start for September. We have a student portal, and on that student portal, we will have a page for every single subject. And what we've asked heads of departments to do is to upload materials that will help you with uh, some of these questions. Um, so we will be able to upload booklets, revision guides, reading materials, and that will give um, your sons and daughters the, uh, the additional support that they need over the summer term, over the summer holidays, and it would be brilliant if they could actually engage in some of that. Now, obviously, what we're not going to do is to say, right, you've got to do assignments over the summer holidays. We appreciate that it is the, the holiday period um, and that you will have other plans, but the resources will be there for you. If you feel that your sons and daughters need that extra support, then please do direct them. They will be bespoke, they will be personalised, they'll be specific for our GCSE specifications, um, and information about our Head Start programme will come out very, very soon. And we'll put out a letter to all of our parents to let you know how you can access all of that material and save you hundreds of pounds in buying different revision guides. Okay, um, in addition to that, um, there are other additional resources that you can use. So some of you may have heard of the resource called uh, Seneca. Um, it's a resource that is freely available um, on the internet. Um, again, uh, students can go on there and it's a bit like some of the online platforms that you've seen, a bit like GCSE pod, but you can answer questions uh, on there. You've also got GCSE Bite Size, uh, which is a resource produced by the BBC. It's, it's recently actually had a revamp and the resources on there are fantastic. We would highly uh, commend those resources to you. And of course, some of you may have also heard of the National Oak Academy. So the National Oak Academy is uh, something that was set up by the government and it has lots of resources for all of the different subjects on there. So those are some of the additional resources that of course you can use to um, support your sons and daughters over the next few, few weeks and over the summer holidays. Brilliant. So um, I'm going to see if there's any questions that any individuals might have. Uh, again, please do feel free to turn on your mics um, and ask those questions in person. If you don't quite feel comfortable, then please do put it in the chat room at the bottom. Um, OK, so the, there's a question here. That, is there a way to get into Century without a class code. Um, so I, if you actually email helpline, um, so the, the address is helpline at beaconhillacademy.org.uk, um, we will provide you with that information. So email helpline at Beacon Hill Academy and we'll be able to send you a login uh, for your son or daughter. That's not a problem at all. And thank you for that question, Lisa Roberts. Okay. I'll pause again if there's any other questions. Brilliant. Well, in that case, can I thank you again for taking an interest in your son's and daughter's education? We are always here to help. And uh, again, you can use that helpline email address if you have any further questions or queries. That's great. Thank you ever so much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.